Okay, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, thank you everybody for coming to City Council this evening. Um, 15th of July, so we, we after this we've got, this will be for the council's benefit, we got three weeks off. So, always always love a, a month with uh, five Thursdays. So, and Thomas, before you say it, I, I, know, I already know what your thoughts are about five Thursdays. So, uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. Thanks to those watching on uh, TV uh, live stream on Facebook. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and observe our moment of silence and then we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm not sure who else we have on the phone, other than Mr. O'Neill. we have another council person or anyone else on the phone that wants to identify themselves? No? Yeah, okay. Pam's on the phone. Okay, Pam, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Always got to love when the agenda's on legal paper. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, want to welcome everybody. Thank you for attending. Um, we've got every, all council uh, present this evening. Uh, we do have several, several recognized guests that we would need to get to to begin our meeting. Uh, we'll, first, we will go down through uh, who is on the agenda, uh, who has uh, signaled to speak, and then we will go down through who has signed up to speak. Uh, first up is John Waltz, who's chairman of the Colonial Theater Board. Welcome again. Thank you. First, I would like to assure council I do not intend to come here every week. So um, we uh, we are here. Uh, I'm here representing the uh, Colonial uh, Theater Board, Colonial Arts Center Board, um, to uh, speak to you tonight about uh, the recommendation of a uh, a position, uh, a hire that would be relative to the uh, Colonial Arts Center. This is something as we laid some foundational work. Uh, we had said we wanted to work on. Uh, we have been collaborating on this. I uh, especially want to recognize the work of uh, Sai Sakamoto, who's a student at Wesleyan, who is uh, doing an internship with uh, R26201 and working with the Colonial Group as well under Dr. Alway's supervision. So uh, she's gotten some really good work on this that's actually been really practical. So thank you, thank you to everyone for providing that opportunity. And then KB Sane, who also provided her professional input as we worked through this. So we recognize that tonight council may not want to take any sort of action on this or anything. We thought it was important we just bring the position and the concept to you uh, to talk about maybe what the next steps are, what you need uh, from us to understand it a little better. So first of all, I just want to speak to why uh, a position might be required for a space like um, the Colonial Arts Center. And really when you think about it, it's, it's a space as we've explored all the things that could or we hope will happen in there that really cannot be managed by volunteers. Uh, we, we expect that volunteers will be doing a lot of the work. We expect places like Buckingham Community Theater or 26201, other, other educational groups will be working in there, fundraising for the space, doing a lot of different things. But we do not believe that that can be done consistently without the direction uh, of a professional in the space. Many spaces of this type utilize multiple people. We do not believe that's in the reality or a sensible kind of approach. So initially we wrote a job description for someone that does not exist. Uh, this was, and I speak to you as an artist, uh, an organized artist, that's what we were looking for. So we're trying to find the balance of what we think uh, the space needs mostly. And, and, and in your packet, I know there's a, there's a copy of the, you know, the kind of pieces, I just want to bump down through some of it. So uh, we use the term managing director because we didn't want it to be an artistic position, an artistic director or someone who's responsible for the aesthetic or what's going on in there or creating performances themselves. The idea would be to create a position uh, who is really responsible for management of the space. Um, we started by, by noting that this would be a unique opportunity. We think it could be the chance to uh, hopefully try to locate someone to Buckhannon that is unique and brings talents and brings added value to the area. We also then listed the Colonial Arts Center's um, 
mission statement there. Um, we, we've been vague about the reporting and all that kind of stuff. We thought, of course, that would be a council in the cities and, and others' discretion to figure out some of the logistics of that, uh, how that would work exactly. Obviously, the Colonial uh, Arts Center Board, the Colonial Theater Board would be there to you know, certainly work on the, on the pieces of it that were passed in the programming policy. But we broke this out into three or four responsibilities. One was leadership and management. And that included overseeing the facility, scheduling, maintenance, and supervision, uh, maintaining a schedule of events, being responsible for coordinating uh, in, the, in the arts or theater world what would be called front of house, everything that's kind of going on with people checking in, uh, artists coming in, riders and different things, the different performers would bring with them, making sure that all of those things were done. But we also recognized in working on this, this person might have to change toilet paper rolls and make sure that the trash is up to I mean, really, it will have to be a catch-all. Now, it's not to say there wouldn't be cleaning fees in the city folks and other things we would have to, you know, to include in that, but when we realize a person that's going to do this job will have to be willing to do a lot of different things and wear a lot of different hats. Um, we, we wanted to make sure to note diversity, equity, and inclusion, and to enforce the city's policies and procedures. We, we wanted to flush that out, but we would follow whatever the city's guidelines are, obviously. Um, we thought financial responsibility would, would be important, so to work with the city, civic groups, and others on development, fundraising for the space, that's going to be critical. Obviously, we're going to have a celebration when the thing opens in the finished state that we hope it will, will be, but we don't believe that's the end, that's the beginning. That's the opportunities for grants and ongoing things here forward, but we need a person constantly pursuing those things, uh, those ideas. Um, we want someone to research and support marketing, fundraising, budgeting, uh, all the financial record keeping, the reporting, even reconciliation of things like concessions, box office, uh, all those kind of things that have to happen uh, in a space like that. Also, you hope it's a vibrant space where people are renting uh, classrooms, teaching lessons, all of those different things. That's the idea. Um, External relations, we thought the person would represent the art center, it would be that person that was coming to these meetings generally, uh, to report to you quarterly or however often you wanted to produce regular reports and all the kind of things you would expect. Um, we want to identify, establish, nurture collaboration with the city of Buchanan. At the last meeting, there were questions about how do we roll in Arts Alliance, how do we roll in other groups, educational entities. This person would be constantly working to do that, to make sure those groups uh, are drawn nearer. Um, again, the reporting and then we thought uh, we would include language about keeping a community arts calendar. That language seemed to come from the city and some other places that we've heard from other arts organizations too, that it would help if there was a coordinated arts calendar across the city uh, where we were making sure things were going on at different times, that we were supporting each other and not conflicting and trying regularly to, to schedule and sell things. Finally, we thought they would manage a website as well as social media channels. And when I say a website, I mean like running a back end or something, you know, not, not designing it necessarily. So uh, the qualifications we thought we were looking for someone that has a passion, love for the arts, written verbal and speaking skills, development, fundraising and financial management, prior leadership experience. We thought it would be helpful to mention if they worked with groups of nonprofits or things of this size and scope, that would be really important to us. And then, you know, we didn't write the education into it. Instead, we focused more on the four years of prior experience with arts, arts management or, or, or close field. Um, when we, we researched salaries, again, we made a recommendation. Uh, obviously, we know that that's for council and others to take up, especially when there's budgetary requirements for something like that. But, you know, when we looked at those salaries, a lot of them were a bit higher than what we had listed here. We've tried to scale that to a rising star, a first, per, a first opportunity of this scale, you know, something that we think would fit in our community, and that would be similar to people that might lead an organization maybe of something like Stalker. And we try to think of something that's going to have people in it all the time and have things going on all the time. We think that that's it. So, again, for council's consideration, we, we simply today wanted to bring the job description. Um, you know, what happens with it from, from that point in time, obviously, we'd like to follow council and others lead and are happy to provide more information or to follow up on anything or to take whatever steps. We also wanted to get this because of the break after this meeting into your hands as quickly as possible because we think it's important as the space readies to open uh, that we consider trying to get a person into that space. So happy to answer any questions about that. Well, I appreciate the fact that you spent the time to outline all this. My experience is that board of directors are not always the most effective and efficient way to manage employees. And occasionally they can, uh, they get put in a position and then they find themselves defining their own role. Right. And so uh, 
I guess it would be important that the makeup of the board of directors understands that it's especially in the beginning of a new hire that they people are clearly outlining the expectations sure. and, uh, and and holding them accountable. A lot of times uh, if you serve on a board of directors, no one wants to be the bad guy, especially if you're in the minority because they're going to ignore you and it won't, no, there's no benefit to st stepping up and saying something that needs said. So that's just my two cents. But I, I appreciate the fact that you made a thoughtful outline. Yeah, and Cy and others really worked through. They looked at positions like this at theaters of the size all around, you know, the tri-state area. That's kind of what we sort of started with or those kind of things. And again, we would find that often these places would have two different people, someone that's managing it, <coughs> someone that's maybe doing artistic work. Again, we don't think that's really in the reality for us. We've also seen some theaters nearby that are overstaffed or spending too much money on this. And again, our hope would be for this to become sustained. So we would want it to sustain by bookings, uh, by rental fees, by all those kind of things that come in. But we also would want to get in an entry point that was realistic so that we didn't burden the city with anything. Because it's going to take a little bit of time. We're going to have to find out what the right rates are and to find out what, you know, what people are willing to pay. But, uh, and I think the CJ's point, you know, luckily in our case, the board will have a pretty defined role, which is really much more about the programming policy, defining what stuff goes into that space. Uh, working on a food and beverage policy and some of those other things we were just talking to Laura about. Um, you know, we're going to be bringing some of those things later, but but really we would hope that this person would be the one trying to team those things up for, for that group to make it easy. So. Yeah, and I think, I think it's important to say that uh, getting the right person into this center uh, off the, off, with the start is going to be vitally important yeah. because it is going to take somebody who is willing to go out and be judicious in, in securing talent, securing events, and utilizing the square footage that's in that building, top to bottom, and making it a vital uh, centerpiece in Buchanan. Once we do open it, we don't want it to be empty. Right. And, and it has to, it just has to be active. And I know, again, uh, in, in my experience, I've had event centers obviously larger than, than this center, but knocking on my door all the time, wanting me to bring what I produce to their facility. And we need to be aggressive in that same manner. Uh, we're not going to, people aren't going to just seek us out. We can't be hiding and saying, okay, yeah, if you find us, we'll have a space to rent to you. We need to be aggressively going out and, and selling ourselves and saying, we have this opportunity, we have this space, we, we, we found you, we think you'd be a perfect spot, and that's what this person needs to do, is be a salesperson as well as a manager and so forth. So, but we need that person in place so that when the doors open, you know, they're ready to go out and, and sell this, this properly. So, but yeah, I agree, and, and Cy did a great job in putting all this together and listening to the other suggestions of those who had input with the board and so on. So, very, very impressed with that. I agree. You want to pull this? Forward, F1. I, agree. I think, well, we've got two <clears throat> strategic issues for discussion and or vote that are relative to the Colonial Theater this evening. One is F1, <clears throat> approval of, the, of a job description, and two is F6, which is the approval of Ordinance 452, which is renaming the Colonial Theater facility to Colonial Arts Center, or CAC, and that is a first reading. Um, so... If the council would uh, agree to bring F1 and F6 to the table, I'd entertain a motion to that effect. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Motion by Mary, second by CJ. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It appears the ayes have it. Is there any? Uh, do we? Uh, no, okay, so I, F1, we'll take these up individually. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we've got the approval of the job description from the Colonial Theater Managing Director. Uh, is there any questions or comments to Mr. Waltz regarding his presentation? And again, in, in discussing the job description, the salary, as you 
said, John, is something that needs to be hammered out. Absolutely. Uh, with it's, this is not set in stone. Yeah. There's, there's a recommendation in there. Yeah. We've made a recommendation that's based on our research, and right. uh, we're happy to inform that further if the right people need to ask those questions. Right. So that's Correct. something that's just yeah. uh, it's just something to look at, and it's something that uh, we need to check with with uh, our with AM, you know and B and council needs to review and we need to compare other salaries within the city and so on and so forth. I mean you know we just need our due, due diligence. Right. Yeah. So so, so I, I just want to make sure that we know when we're voting on this we're not voting on a lock, exactly. locked salary mm -hmm. it range or anything. Yeah. I, I look at it that we're that we're looking at the conception or the conceptual right. uh, position and 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 what that person will be doing in there. But I, I agree Randy with what you said. May I, may, I, may I ask a question of Amby? Sure. Um, Amby, because she is our financial person, and um, do you have any input about the um, recommended 45 to 50 salary for that? Um, we probably should talk about that a little bit. I agree. Let's, you know, let's not get into... Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. But, the, but the concept and everything in it, yeah. I, I yeah. was part of that, too, and it, it, all, it all looks good as far as... Okay. I, I would make one comment, if you can. The uh, last council meeting, I, I threw out the idea that the uh, with the sales tax, the uh, revenue flow of the city is, has been enhanced dramatically and it's going to continue uh, for the foreseeable future. And I think the, uh, probably, John, with this uh, financial responsibility with the Arts Center. At some point in time, this is what I was thinking: the sales tax money could be used to, you know, front load this kind of opportunity for the future. And uh, it, it may never ever be self-sustaining. You just never know. We don't know what the results are going to be one year, two, three, three, four, or five years. But I think there's a, a certainly it can make sense for the sales tax money to be supporting these kind of projects, both from self-funding and sustainability. So I just wanted to make that comment. Yeah. Jack? Comment I have on the job description, uh, and this is based on my experience professionally, and that is what gets monitored gets done. Uh, sorry for the cliche, but, but it is true. And, and one of the things that I'd like to see added under financial responsibility is about weekly or, or bi-weekly reports to the city regarding you know uh, any of the financial responsibilities uh, usage of the facility etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, <clears throat> I think that uh, would help anyone in a management position uh, and, and enable them to, to make wise and better decisions also it would also inform the mayor and the council you know, as, as to, you know, what's happening and, yeah. and, uh, and taking steps, you know, to make sure it's successful. Yeah, we thought reporting would be critical, and I think you can be at the direction of council how often they'd like to see those things. I yeah. think that's a great idea. Sounds good. I move we accept the uh, job description as put forth. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Rollins. We have a second by Mrs. Allball. On the table, is there any further discussion? Hearing the need for none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of the approval of the job description, this is not, this is, we're not hiring anybody, this is just the concept of the job description. Uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those like, sign opposed. The motion has carried unanimously. Okay. Now, we move down uh, per the motion pri pre uh, previously to approval of Ordinance 452, which is the renaming of the Colonial Theater Facility to the Colonial Arts Center, C or CAC, as first reading. We are joined by our city attorney, Tom O'Neill, uh, who is at a conference this week, but is joining us uh, to the meeting, and he will take us through uh, the first reading of the ordinance. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, the council has before ordinance number 452 of the city of Buchanan, an ordinance renaming the city-owned property located at 48 East Main Street in the city of Buchanan as the Colonial Arts Center 
and renaming the governing board established in ordinance number 450 as the Colonial Arts Center Board. This is the first of two readings, uh, just for the benefit of members of council. There, there, are, two, um, there are two objects of this uh, ordinance. The first uh, is, uh, has been uh, mentioned previously, that is to uh, rename the facility as the Colonial Arts Center. But uh, arising from that, we also need to rename the board that is uh, uh, governing or overseeing uh, or guiding the facility. Uh, currently, it's called the Colonial Theater Board, uh, but with the renaming of the facility, it should also be renamed as the Colonial Arts Center Board. I'd be happy to take any questions. Are there any questions or comments from Mr. O'Neill? This is a reminder to the council where this all of the legwork has been done in this in, in the first ordinance which would have been 450 these are just two uh changes uh which would prompt the additional ordinance i move we accept the ordinance. okay we have a motion by mr thomas do we have a second 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 by mrs Allball. is there any discussion on the motion hearing the need for none we'll call for the question all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. See, Jack, I'm right at home. I, you know, you, you you trained me well to, to, to wait to wait up for the phone. Thank so. you, Council, for your time. Thank you very much, thank you, John, for your time. And thank you for the <clears throat> Okay. All right. Um, Susan Alloy is up next to review the planning commission uh, meeting. She serves as president of our planning commission. Thanks for inviting me here this evening. Um, just as a reminder, uh, I know City Council doesn't need this reminder, but just as a reminder, the City Planning Commission has no decision authority. We just make recommendations to um, City Council. Our role is really to facilitate the goals of the comprehensive plan, which we developed uh, the most recent one a couple of years ago, 2025 plan, and was approved by this body. So I'm just going to read you, um, I call it a um, statement on Madison Street property. Uh, recorder Sanders tells me this is a findings report, so I'll give you a written <laughs> copy of it when you're finished. So um, to solicit input from the general public, the Planning Commission hosted a special meeting on June 15th to discuss possible uses of the Madison Street property. Discussion had um, occurred at Create Buchanan meetings. Um, Councilman Rylands um, facilitates those meetings, and I'm Secretary of Create Buchanan. And we wanted broader input, and we were trying to figure out how to do it. It was COVID time. And so finally, eventually, we just said, we're on planning commission. We'll hold a special meeting, invite people from the public. It's a planning issue for the city. Um, so as an introduction to that meeting, CJ shared that when purchasing the property, the intention of council was to, use, to expand the use of Jawbone Park. So there was a consensus on that intention, but not specifics of how that property would be used. But that was the intention of it. Um, city architect Bryson Van Nostren also attended our special meeting, and he explained the role of good city design, um, which incorporates green space proportional to concrete or asphalt space, and also the importance of being a good neighbor by preserving a border with residential areas. Um, Planning Commissioner Rich Clemens shared a reminder that we needed to be sure to consider how zoning regulations and flood zone restrictions impact what's possible for this property. It is all in the flood zone, so that does um, prohibit a few of the ideas that people suggested, but um, still plenty of things to do. So there were several members of the um, community who attended this meeting. Um, some spoke about their ideas for the use of Madison Street property, and these um, possible uses included these ideas. Green space with picnic tables under umbrellas or bench seating, additional parking, restrooms, splash pad, playground equipment, skateboard park, ice skating rink or something similar for outdoor winter activities, pickleball, um, that was a message sent to me through Facebook and I forgot to share it at the public meeting, so I'm getting it in here, um, and facilities to expand events such as vendor hookups and um, that sort of thing. It was pickleball for my father. I'm not saying, but I no, promised I to share him. it at the meeting, and I had it written on my... I did tell him to follow the proper channels, so... He did, and, well, he was out of town, so, and I forgot to bring it up. What is pickleball? 
Um, it's, what did he tell me? It was tennis for old people? Yeah. yeah. Girls. <laughs> I think that's how he described right it. Don't put that in the minutes. Or if you do, <laughs> you need it to. But it's, um, it's a lower impact form. Uh, it's kind of a cross between ping pong and tennis. It's a lower impact form, lower net, um, more standing, less running, from my understanding. Is anybody, there? it's very popular in um, lots of suburban areas, but I've never played myself. You're not old enough yet, right? Of course. <laughs> All right. So, um, several local skateboarders attended a, a following Create Buchanan meeting um, to make their case for including a small skate park. Um, several designs of small skate parks in other towns were shared and discussed. Um, in discussion, we had subsequent discussion at other Create Buchanan meetings. Um, at the last week's meeting, not today's, but last week's, one of the skateboarders actually had a drawing of um, where it might fit, um, how it might, and it, it, it seemed to be substantive for them, what, you know, would have incorporated the elements that, that were important to them, but in the overall drawing, it didn't take up that much space of the, of the property. What age group was it? Um, they were high schoolers. Um, very savvy. They were. They did some research. They did the d design. They participated in our meetings. It was really fun. Um, Brayson seems to think that several elements: green space with seating tables, residential border, parking, small skate park, and space for restrooms can all be incorporated into one design. So he doesn't think that these. You know, several of these ideas don't exclude some of the other ideas. You know, of course, if it were a skating rink, it probably you know an ice skating rink. Um, that would probably mean that you know other things couldn't fit in there, um, but he does seem to think that these can all be incorporated. Um, the city needs further discussion on how much parking is needed downtown. We've had a lot of discussion about discussion about that at um, Create Buchanan meetings, um, and what type of restroom facility is appropriate. We were informed by the health department that we're required to have one restroom facility for every hundred people, five hundred. 150. 150, sorry, <laughs> for every 150 people. Um, but, w you know, we, we're at Create Buchanan, we're just um, local volunteers, we couldn't identify what type of facility. Except I will tell you a little side story. Um, I was helping, I was volunteering at Festival Friday last week, and there was an issue in the men's bathroom. Um, I tried to fix it and couldn't just put a sign out of order, but it's just like a commode like I would have in my house. For like hundreds of people to use, so just some you know something to consider. Maybe in you know I'm sure there's some sort of restroom facility that's intended for lots of public use, and that probably is not what's down there at Jawbone. Um, okay, so um, the city does need to have further discussion about parking and what type of restroom facility is appropriate and how it can be maintained. So just some um, concluding points um, from our uh, planning commission discussion. Uh, maximize the use of the area. Whatever is decided should be useful all the time, right? So don't exclude some uses for 11 months of the year to make use for, you know, one month of the year. Um, consider combining some of the elements that were suggested into one design. And align the use of this space to the goals of the comprehensive plan. The goals of the comprehensive plan that seem most relevant to me are um, one, the goal of increasing outdoor recreational opportunities, which came up a lot when we did our survey and focus groups and town hall meetings for um, preparing the plan. Um, promoting physical activities to improve health. Um, we added the health section, it wasn't required by code, but we thought it was important to have in there. And um, collaborate to enhance the city and strengthen the community. So um, making sure that lots of voices are heard um, different organizations are considered, how the, how the property could be used. Any questions? I, I don't have any questions, Susan, but I have a couple comments. Sure. Um, I think one of the scenarios that have to, has to be considered very appropriately would be what is the ongoing operational cost if we do a lot of these things. I mean, for example, if you have a skate park, uh, ice park, or a splash, you know, there are certain things that have to be done to maintain them, make them safe, and so forth. And um, that has to be part of the plan long term. I've also uh, been on the council for enough years that I remember, uh, and I'm not against a skate park, uh, 
for our citizens, our youth. But I remember we did have one uh, that we put in at least $35,000, and this was back 2004, five or six. And uh, it was used, but also it uh, lost the, uh, uh, the entertainment quite fast. And we had a lot of vandalism there, and we also had a lot of other undesirables there that were uh, doing some certain activities. So whatever we do, we have to make sure that we're able to uh, have the appropriate recreational activities there without intruders coming in and, and uh, doing things they shouldn't be doing. Yeah. I think that's a challenge for us in our society today. Um, Bryson, they we talked about that. Some of the skaters had um, examples from other skate parks, small skate parks, similar to what they were proposing, and um, they did it. They had a very nice conversation with Bryson about. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not against right. it. Right. the same. You know, we had that. We shared the same concerns, and they did want to point out that um, the splash pad or splash park would not is something that would not be permitted in a flood zone. And that was pointed for sanitary reasons. And that was well, you don't want to have a splash park. You have to have somebody in attendance. Right, right. I just wanted to say board. that was an idea that was presented, but not something yeah. that we're suggesting because it's not. No, it's you have to consider what's allowable because of the. It's principal of middle school. I remember when that was built. <clears throat> it's principal at the time, trunks became a major problem. And if I recall, they had to put a fence around it, and the police department pretty much became supervisory over it. Uh, you know. Uh, there are issues with, with certain activities, not with all, but with some. And, and uh, what's the old saying? No good deed goes unpunished. And um, so, whatever decisions made has to be a lot of factors to consider. Sure. Lots of pros and cons. That's your job. Not <laughs> <laughs> and, when you, and when you talk about borders for the neighbors, uh, that's just not the, the property lines. Yeah, it is the what can be heard Correct. from that area because I know where I live um, there's oftentimes a lot of people up at Chapel Hill that are skateboarding and they're very very loud and uh, unfortunately it happens sometimes at 10, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night and uh, of course I get better ears than most people because I can hear things but uh, I appreciate what you're doing and I think it's a great you know public discussion and uh, we should continue right and, and I think that's probably our strongest recommendation is move on this as soon as you can um, I, I know Mr. Sanders will remind you that um, there's some things that need to be um, completed before the um, world marching band competition and it'll be here before we need two summers from now right yeah. so this has to be the design has to be determined the intent has to be finalized the design um, determined and they get it on the list of projects to be Thank done. You. But um, we, uh, uh, Amanda Hayes, took some photos of that area that we were able to share at our uh, planning commission meeting and then at Create Buchanan meetings. It's just an eyesore right now. That, and if you, I cut through that area, um, that's my walk to downtown, and the um, tiles are falling down. Uh, it's, just, it's just gross. We did a cleanup at the end of summer last year, and I had that area. It's just like piles of trash in the corners and clothes, and it's just and a lot not, of what, not how we want to present ourselves. No, that's why we're having these conversations Correct. so we can come up with a right. plan and move it, undertake <laughs> demolition, and try to move this forward. I think you know there is no bad ideas right now. We're trying to gather all the information, pass it on to the planning professional, the architect. And I think he's, he's taking a very thoughtful approach to this. And, uh, you know, his, his idea of taking the area on Lincoln Street and kind of giving that back to the residents where there wouldn't be any cars coming through there anymore. Uh, and he said some plantings would help buffer the sound. Of the yes. Area. And uh, so uh, we're just attempting to facilitate this. And uh, I'm with you in that. And try to come up with a uh, thoughtful approach to have something in place for next construction season or demolition could happen uh, at any, any time. That, and, that, and that might be a good suggestion because it looks terrible. I think, I think it's an flat. investment for the community. That's how we should look Well, it expands the capacity of Jawbone Park to become a regional event center or, or a place where 
more things are happening and uh, accommodating vendors and we have the sound system and there's a lot of things that uh, other communities don't have and the further we differentiate ourselves and, and expand our capacity to, to uh, post these events I think the better off we'll be so and I think we have to have the realization that we have to take a serious look at outsourcing and also internal staff. Well, there's a lot of things that we're talking about with the Colonial Arts Center and the Madison Avenue. Uh, it may require us to have more internal staff for the future. And I think we should be open-minded for that. The, uh, that's very important to discuss in the future. All right, and then if there's anything further that Planning Commission can do to help with this. Just let CJ or um, Randy or me know. I agree. I agree with. I agree with additional conversation. I think it's good that we got the conversation you, started. Thank, so, thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Please. If you thank you for coming this evening. Thank you, Susan, for yeah. your time. I know. And that was Tell the rest a planning of the commission. commission report. That was a planning commission report. That's that the way you. Way you that's the way you do it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Next up is Laura Meadows from down the street was to give us the report with the CVB. Down the street. Well, I promise I'll be really quick. Okay. You know, you walked past Dairy Queen to get here, and I don't see any ice cream on the table, so. I have been good myself, too. I've been limiting once a week, so. What size? A mini. I'm, I'm trying here, Dave. I'm getting to my 30s, you know. We have to work a little harder. Um, so again, I'll keep this really quick. I believe in your packets you have a, um, a budget request from the CBB. Um, I feel like everybody is sick and tired of hearing of COVID and all the negative effects, but um, it's continuing to affect um, our small businesses and also our organization. Um, the past year and several months, we've taken advantage of um, a lot of the federal programs. We've um, we temporarily laid off some staff people. I was um, laid off for a period of time. I mean, we did everything we could just try to respond to the um, revenue loss. So, um, and I think Ambie would even attest to it. We're still not quite seeing that revenue um, from hotel motel tax rebound. I think we're hopeful that this upcoming year will be better. It's not going to. Uh, it will not be back to what is normal. Um, and you know it's frustrating because across the country you hear that everybody's traveling, everybody's out, and that is true to certain pockets. And I've talked to um, people from across the state, and there are pockets in West Virginia that are just booming, and then there are pockets that are still struggling. So certainly for um, Buchanan, it's, it has not rebounded. Um, I've been saying we're right around a 50% reduction just in hotel motel tax. Um, the event center is just a whole different ball game. I mean, that has a, a massive reduction of revenue. Um, but we've been working with the National Guard with all of the overhead expenses and lease payments. Um, but, you know, it continues. And I, I don't want to be in a position for this upcoming year to not um, have any marketing funds and just kind of sit. I, I would really like to have this um, assistance of $25,000 from the city of Buchanan to at least know I can secure um, specific campaigns that we can do, certain projects that we want to do to really let people know, I mean, what we have here, because we have so much happening in Buchanan, we just kind of have to get our feet back under us. Um, so I'm taking this as an opportunity. I've been telling everybody, I've turned a corner of, um, you know, we've wiped the slate clean as far as um, what we've done in the past, and we're rethinking everything that we're doing to make sure it's actually making sense. It's um, being responsible with the funds that we do receive. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, a new, it's a new year. Um, but if there's any questions, please ask me. But you have a lot of information here in um, our official request. With, with the, uh, and you, we talked a little bit earlier today of when we had our meeting with uh, Attorney Wamsby, but uh, with COVID, um, it did change a lot of things. So as we come out of this, I know that you're probably looking at advertising and marketing packages that worked in the past that you did in the past and i know that uh it's easy to just hit repeat you know copy paste repeat and so forth uh, is that kind of what you're looking at or are you reviewing new models or are you looking at new ways to get to consumers to try to get them to come to buchanan 
Yeah, um, I, I think we definitely need to change some of our messaging. I mean, like you said, there are certain tried and true things that you just know that you can do, and it's it's both comfortable, it's it fits within your budget, and it, it has a benefit. I mean, we've we've never we had to make those hard decisions of cutting ties with things. But again, like I said, we have wiped the slate clean and we're really looking at what we've done in the past and showing. And everybody, you know, my board keeps saying it comes down to numbers. And a lot of things you can't really truly track to, did they did they see something that we did and we produced and brought them to Buckhannon. I mean, it's a community effort. But yeah, I mean, I, we're really trying to kind of think outside the box of what we've done traditionally. And, and I just want one, one other follow up is, is you know, I know you said you're rethinking things like the event center, what it can be utilized for. The square footage is there, it's valuable square footage, but you know, it, obviously, it, you know, we're just past the area of time that you can have a gathering of any size whatsoever, right. you know, within the last few weeks. So it's hard to get uh, events in quickly, mm -hmm. but it's time to start m marketing for them. And, and do we do an aggressive effort of of calling and I know you can't really bid on an event because you really don't have the money or capital to put out finders fees. I know that I've had other towns offer me uh, host fees if I brought my event to them. We, we're not in a position to do that. I, I certainly understand that, but are we, are we doing that? Are we looking around to see if there's some small events, mid-sized events that we can go out and say, look, this is why you should move it to Buchanan? Absolutely. I mean, that comes and, and goes. I mean, sometimes it's our strength, it's our focus, and then sometimes, you know, whenever you're actually hosting the events, whenever we were busy with events in 2018-19, that was our best, busiest year. Mm -hmm. And you think you have two full-time staff people. I'm trying to do CBB side of things. Sean is actively managing the event and trying to do those sales. So, I mean, it, it comes and goes. But, yeah, absolutely, that needs to be our focus, not only to go out and um, beat the pavement and reach out to those organizations to try to sell um, our venue, but also, um, you know, hosting our own types of events. We've got some plans coming out for some different adult classes, different adult um, types of um, entertainment where we can do, you know, um, sushi making classes and all kinds of different things, um, just to use the space and show people. Again, like you said, we're, we're back able to be open, we're able to host those gatherings, so. I know I've been contacted twice in the last week about catering events at the event center, so I would say you turn in the corner. Yeah, we, and there's always that hesitation. I mean, right now we get a lot of the calls, but I need to actually convert them from the interest to the contract. Yeah. I mean, throughout the summer, but I think everybody's still just a little hesitant, especially for this larger size gatherings, but I think this fall that will be better. Laura, how many um, workers you, does Sean have now? Um, yeah. One part-time staff person. Yeah. And and we, uh, and didn't um, when COVID came, we had we we had got those rack cards and couldn't even put them out. I know. Remember, we lost money on that, you know. But yeah, that, we, we produced, didn't know COVID was coming. We produced um, the festival Fridays for 2020, yeah. the strawberry festival for 2020. I mean, there was a lot of stuff that just. Yeah. Well, but, just just when you think about the lack of fundraisers for different uh, organizations in the community, you know, we had the spelling bee for uh, Arch Alliance. We had, we had fundraiser for Stockard Youth Center. Uh, you can just list a whole bunch of things that hopefully this next year we'll be able to go out to the event center. I mean, Colonial Art Colonial Art Center is a tremendous opportunity to do a fundraiser too. So I just think. I'm looking forward to getting out there again and uh, doing some things. I, I would hope too that mm -hmm. the hotel and motel owners, uh, some, I uh, know we have a couple of national chains, but locally owned ones would, you know, be open to working with you to help create a pattern of their week, of their week seasons or week spots so that, and again, you can't react to it fast enough this year, but you can build a pattern to know what you need to work aggressively to fill uh, next year, uh, you know, if there's a couple of weeks that's soft for them, then that's what you want to go out to put heads in beds, you know, in, in certain times of the year. And we were even having that conversation earlier today to just get a better um, um, pinpoint on, you know, is it um, industry travel, is it right. leisure travel? That right. Right. Do we want to move that? It's not just us either, yeah. it's just everywhere. It is, yeah. 
Yeah. But you still do a wonderful job, Lawrence. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'd like to uh, see if we couldn't move uh, F2, which is the $25,000 request, uh, to the table for consideration while Laura is here. I'd entertain a motion that we do that. Second. Motion by Thomas, second by Allball. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I move we accept aye. and endorse. Uh, you do what? I mean, I make a motion that we endorse $25,000. Oh, okay. And give it to Even better. So, so we had a motion and a second, and everybody was in favor of bringing the, 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 yes. to the table. We now have a motion by Mr. Thomas to have a second to uh, approve the $25,000 funding request for the CVB. Second. A second by Mr. Rylands. Is there any further discussion? Hearing the need for none, we'll call for the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 There you go. Aye. Like sign opposed, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. I'll come see thank you. Thanks. And thank you for all your help uh, on our recent event. So. <laughs> okay. Dennis, uh, you're here to talk to us about the Parks and Recreation Board. Yes, sir. First, I need to apologize to Mr. Donato. At the last meeting, I reported that he was a new member and a new pool director. That was not correct. He is a new member of the board only. I know how this happened, and I will not go into it here. The pool director remains Hannah Lively, and the co-director remains Adam Brumley. My sincere apologies to all mentioned in error. From now on, I will be using excerpts from the minutes as compiled by Rachel Weber. She's the secretary for the board. Since they are not ready yet, we will have to wait until they get approved at the next meeting. I can report that the disc golf is almost ready to go. I am supplying a few pictures. You should see them on the table there. The two holes shown are near the two pavilions in the park behind the high school football field. I can supply a more detailed report as I get the minutes and clear my notes with Josh Hinchman. And thank you. That's the end of my report, sir. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. Take care, guys. Okay. Frisbee golf has been a topic of discussion for a decade or more, so yeah, it's, it's happening. It could be commended for taking action. I'm going to read I'll pass on that report. I'm going to research pickle games. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have gone through who has already signed up to speak that is on the agenda as recognized guests. Now we move to the sheet where uh, folks signed in whenever they got here. So we are to uh, Mr. Mike McCauley from College Avenue. Hi, uh, I'm Mike McCauley. I live on College Avenue. Um, everybody before me was so upbeat. Sorry, I had to. I come to complain. But I promise I won't ask for money. You know? um, I live right across the street from two houses that the college owns. They're the two at the College and Mead intersection where their Wesleyan sign is. That parking lot across from there. That first house and the second house. Those two houses, they turned them into dormitories. And um, in the past year, they've had a lot of parties there. And I haven't gotten any really good response to stopping it. You know, <clears throat> I live right across the street. I'm, I'm probably the only house on the block that doesn't have air conditioning in it, you know? So it's, it's fall, they're starting school, they're all excited, they wanna have parties, and I get to hear it all in my bedroom, you know? Um, There'll be like 10 or 12 people on a, on a front porch at, you know, 11 o'clock at night hooting and hollering. You know, they have a lot of car traffic when they have a party and doors slamming all, all hours into the morning. Foot traffic. And everybody has to yell to everybody. When, once they get back over by the Wesleyan sign, they have to yell back to everybody that's still there and have a conversation, you know. It's just, just, it's just not working out well, you know. Um, <clears throat> They have those two houses. They don't have any real good lighting around it at nighttime. In between them, it's real dark. When they have a party, I can sit on my porch and watch them and twos or three or four people go out in between the two houses and they're all sharing the same cigarette, you know? It's like, 
I don't think they're poor. I just think they're smoking pot. And why are they doing that here? You know, it's just not. It's not. It's not something I want to see in my neighborhood. You know. Um, <clears throat> The next day after their parties, there's trash, all beer bottles out laying around. There's trash in the street. Numerous times I have to send my kids over there with a trash bag to pick all the trash up where the cars park. Um, my wife had to go over there once and, and sweep up broken liquor bottles because we'll probably get, a, we'd get the flat from it, you know. It's just way, way excessive, you know. Um, <clears throat> we have a NORS or ordinance for that. But nothing ever seems to happen about it. I mean, they never get in trouble for it. Let me relay the last story, their last party at the end of, end of this year last year. Um, I first called the police about 10 o'clock because they're hooting and hollering, a lot of people coming and going. Um, <clears throat> sometime after that, it got quiet, so I assumed the police officer came by. 10 minutes later, they're back at it. I call, I call the comm center again, 11.30, the police officer shows up for the second time. And it's like, I'm like two hours into this, you know? It's like, I'm going to work at five o'clock in, in the morning the next day. I, I don't I don't think I should have to put up with this, you know? And I, was, I wanted to talk to the officer, so I walked up to the near the car so when he got out he could see me. And the first thing he said to me was, if I have to come back a third time, they're getting a ticket. Why aren't they getting a ticket the first time? Why aren't they getting a ticket the second time? Why? There's no, there's nothing in that ordinance about noise that they get three strikes before they get punished for it. Um, so I'm thinking there's got to be more to this. What what's going on here? Why is this? This seems like an easily fixed problem. Um, so I, I go to the police station the next day, and I ask to speak to an officer. And he comes out and sits. We sit in those chairs outside, and I tell him my story about last night. And he bluntly told me that they don't like giving tickets because that's, that's what the city council wants, not give the college kids tickets. And I'm thinking, that's, that's not fair. They should be getting a ticket every time they have a noise complaint. If they meet the requirements of the noise complaints, they should get tickets for that. Does this council have some kind of rule that you shouldn't be ticketing college kids? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. Well, they're not getting tickets for anything. I mean, they're, there's fights out in the front yard and stuff, you know? That's it. It's, it's, it's just crazy what's going on there. You know, I mean, it's not all the time, obviously, you know? Have you seen the police chief about this? No, but if, if someone's saying that that's what the policy is, I figured I'd come here and ask. Okay. Have, have you all? It, in, and it's not correct. Well, well, that's good. Then I should see if they have parties and they meet the requirements for the noise, and they should be getting tickets for that. Yes. That seems right. like a reasonable thing, you know. Well, have you gone to the college, Mike, to talk to them also? Well, I have about various things, but I don't pay my taxes to the college, and I don't look to them to solve my problems. You know, you people solve my solve my problems. I called, I, I called the college, and they said that that's not their. That's not their responsibility because it's off campus. It's off campus, and so that's the city's responsibility. But they do own the property. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. They, they do. They said the it property. was off campus. That's not their. That that is. A but if nobody's getting tickets, nobody's doing anything. You know. Is is that a um, a, a west a college house? Yes. yes both of them are college it's, houses. It's it's their problem. <laughs> well, Even though well, they're well they're it's my problem. I don't. I don't. I don't, we're not here to, no. I don't, we're not pointing fingers at the, I mean, we have an ordinance in place. Right. We're not here to say it's the college's problem. Right. I mean, the college, we, right. you know, if they own the property, there should, there should be some responsibility there, but there also should be some responsibility for the ordinance that we have in place to be followed. Right. That's, right. that's all I'm asking. So, so what is the specifics of the ordinance and how has it I don't been think it has an actual, in the past? A decibel number on it, but it's like, is there a time limit? I well 10 last 30 year, or 11? Summer or? came and I, I forgot all about it. You know. Quiet. <laughs> yeah. We all know what quiet is. You yeah. know. I think it's like after 9 or 9 30. But Matt, are you aware of this issue? Uh, just through channels. You know, I appreciate Mr. McCauley's concern. 
certainly I'd be happy to discuss it. Matt, can you speak up or join the microphone? Sure. Thank you. So, with uh, specifically with the ordinances, uh, as you, you all know, the city police uh, has long embraced uh, a mindset of discretion and community policing, where we're not uh, uh, just approaching every single issue that comes to our attention with an immediate ticket. Uh, I, I know that in a lot of situations, uh, using discretion and trying to find reason with the offending party, whatever the ordinance may be, whether it be a noise ordinance, parking situation, etc. Discretion does go a long way. I, I found uh, uh, results, positive results that we've gotten from that. Um, sometimes not, though. You know, it's not a, uh, uh, certainly not the uh, the rule. Uh, that it always occurs. But we always try to embrace with the concept of community, especially if it's a, a, a new issue that's, you know, and I, beyond the end of the school year, I'm not really familiar with any other issues that happened at this house. Nothing that certainly was brought to my attention as an ongoing issue. Those situations that do become an ongoing issue where individuals are not responding to warnings and the use, the positive use of discretion. Certainly we have uh, ordinances in place that have penalties, that have an enforcement section that um, we, we uh, do visit uh, when uh, the latter, uh, or the former rather, doesn't work. Um, uh, there's been a number of occasions, whether it be fraternities, other private houses where we have issued violations of the noise ordinance and, and uh, just in, in some summary of the ordinance generally speaking it's uh, it's enforceable when you can hear the noise beyond 25 feet from the property 25 feet beyond the property line and I know there's a lot of, uh, of situations that are obviously violating that that ordinance and, and again we try to approach if it's a new situation you have my warning turn it down and then if it becomes ongoing then we go to the next level Sometimes there's some gray area, uh, and so, so no two situations are exactly alike. They're not all, um, uh, uh, you know, the obvious range of, of, uh, uh, of violating the ordinance. And I'm not classifying what this situation is one way or the other, um, you know, but the, it is uh, these types of situations uh, aren't designed after a cookie cutter. There are, not, there are no two situations uh, I found in my experience is, is exactly alike, and, and, and therein lies the, the human element and, and the use of discretion and, and how we handle these things. Uh, certainly, again, if it's an ongoing issue, we have that enforcement section that we have used and will use if we're not getting positive response to warnings through reasoning. Um, one of the best things that I've found, especially if uh, I've seen situations where even when tickets are issued, it still becomes a continuing issue. And um, there's uh, a particular place in town that we've dealt with repeatedly over the last couple of years that we've had complaints on. And we've made arrests there. Uh, we've arrested <coughs> one individual twice. We've arrested another, another individual once. We've issued tickets there. And yet the, uh, the problems persist. When it becomes pervasive at that point, one of the steps that I've found is probably the most effective, which goes to the mayor's comments, is to reach out to the owner of the house, especially if it's the case of a rental. Uh, there's a lot of latitude that the landlord has over that piece of property, a lot of, a, a lot of responsibility uh, that, that they bear in being the landlord of that property. And I found in my experience when I approach uh, the landlord, of these issues, especially if I'm able to present uh, not an isolated incident, but uh, kind of a broad perspective of, of ongoing issues that uh, more often than not, and again, this is not always the case, but more often than not, I've seen a positive result from the landlord taking it serious and taking action against uh, the tenants. So that's certainly <coughs> something to consider. If this is ongoing and they're not responding, it's not an isolated incident, they're not responding to um, 
uh, police contact uh, uh, in, in, through warnings, and we have to uh, issue tickets, and certainly that can be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis when it when it violates this ordinance. Uh, if it's ongoing, then certainly uh, the next step is to contact the landlord, which I guess in this case would be the college. Yeah, and for the college to respond, that's off campus. <coughs> understand what our position is and you know Matt I, I sat at my house last Saturday night and for an hour and a half there were massive fireworks and I don't know where they're coming from it's somewhere on Florida Street I think or down near Jawbone but they they were not put on by the uh, the city or anything it was you know some private individual doing it and uh, some people called the police and they didn't get a response. And I just want to let you know that. Thank you. Who doesn't like fireworks? <laughs> My cats. My dogs. What comes? We, we had a, a, a similar thing, not partying. Parking, parking, parking. And the city and the, the, the college and the police department, all of that, we, we got that worked out. Okay. I live on one of them blocks. That does work. Right, it, it, and it does work. It the does Board work. of Education even helps out on that. So I'm sure that you put your heart and mind to put it together, and they'll they'll take care of it. I suggest you call the president of the college at one o'clock in the morning if you're getting uh, disrupted. Let him know what's going on. I was leaning more towards coming over your house. That's fine too. Let me <laughs> let, and let, making that same noise for your neighbor. Let, let me know too. <laughs> hey, I'll go. I'll go to the uh, rental property with you. Go but, with me. You know, they're kids. You know, I, I have two grown kids, and they're still kids. Sometimes you yep. think they're they're ten years old. Other times you think they're they're the age they really are. You know, but <clears throat> they they just don't seem to get any nothing. You're you're talking to a kid that's in their third or fourth year of college, and you're telling them stuff, and they're going like this. We don't want to hear that. Go away. We'll turn it down while you're. You got alcohol. You got alcohol involved. Yeah. And you got, as you said, probably marijuana. So maybe some other stuff we shouldn't be involved. Yeah. But uh. But we should respond for your. But so your maybe we could. I'll talk to you. Maybe we'll we can work out something and do a little do better at that. You know. But I think getting a warning every every third Saturday night when they have a party is probably not going to work. You know, you're on right. the first time. You know. Um. I have to bring up one more thing, and I, I feel silly for bringing it up because it's about trash, and it's about the same two houses, and it's their trash cans. They're college kids. You know, when they start school, I go over there and introduce myself. You got a problem? You need a a jump or a battery case or a battery charger, or you need a snow shovel? Come see me. I'll lend that to you. You know, but trash day is Tuesday. Monday, the ordinance says you put your can out on Monday, it's dumped on Tuesday, you bring it back behind your house on Tuesday. They can't grasp that concept. They'll, <clears throat> they'll put it out there on whatever day, or they'll just leave it there, and they'll walk out and lift the lid and throw their bag in there, and it's like, you can't do that. You gotta put it back there. I don't wanna look at your trash cans. And <clears throat> at the end of semester, they clean out stuff, and they'll throw a bunch of bags out there, and it's like, they're not gonna take that. You gotta put tags on it, or you gotta do something different, you know? And it's like, honest to God, if you want a picture, I got a picture of a trash can and 14 black bags in front of one house. It's like, you can't do that, you know? I called the college about that, and they came over and got it. But, so at the end of the semester, they pile up a lot of trash, or if they have extra trash for any reason, they set it by the can, and the city doesn't take it because it doesn't have a tag on it. So they feel they put it to the curb, so they're done with it. So it sits there until someone else deals with it, you know? And then at the end of the year, when all the garbage comes out, it's just a madhouse, you know? And then the, the college has cleaning crews or whatever comes by those houses after people are gone. And they'll do the same thing. It's, it's, it's Thursday, they're there on Thursday, they'll put the trash out. It's like, the trash can only go out on Monday for pickup Tuesday. I mean, that's the ordinance. Stop putting the cans out here. They don't pay any attention to that rule. 
And then they get people to come in there in the summertime and stay in those houses. And some of them don't put any trash out, and others will bag their trash up and set it out on a sidewalk. It's like, it's crazy. What those two houses need, they need to be made, just put a dumpster in the back and stop dealing with all this stuff. You know, it's crazy, because they don't bring their cans out. They can't put them back. I, I've watched that end house had girls in it. And it has nothing to do with that they're girls, but they have those steps there. And the city would put that can back up at the top of those steps. And I'd watch those girls walk in the grass around that can to get into their house. It's like, do you see that can? And they would answer, no, what can? You know, it's like, you, the one you have to walk around on the sidewalk to go back into your house, put it back, you know? Sometimes I thought about going over there and spray painting on the lid the rules, you know? Put on curb Monday. Bring back Tuesday, you know? That's a great idea. You I have to put that on my calendar. But, you know, we, we all bring that can out and we all put it back, you know? Yeah. It, it's just great. They just need a dumpster in the back, you know? Well, here, here's, what, here's what I think is, it makes the most sense. I think that there should be dialogue opened up with not only our police department and management of our police department to make sure we're all on the same page, but also with Westland to make, to, to, I think they deserve to know what the neighbors around them are seeing, hearing, feeling. I think that's the best way to build community is that we all just try to have some dialogue opened up so that everybody is on the same page with where, where we are. Westland can't do anything about the problem if, they're not, if the administration isn't aware of what's going on. And it may not always be communicated from the maintenance staff back to the administration that what's going on. And so I think that's the best way forward is we all, just may, maybe we need to get a small meeting set up before campus starts, I'll attend, and, and we can just talk with, you know, some administration at the college and also with and invite our police chief to come and maybe an officer to come too of just what, what is expected uh, to be, for everybody to be good neighbors to each other because uh, there has to be given in any neighborhood situation we, when you live in a community we have to have give and take with each other and, and I think that that's I think that's the most important and I, and I think we've got some time it's July school starts in mid-August I think we've got some time to get that set up and uh, I think that's the best way to try to mitigate some issues that the neighbors are feeling that's why at the end of the year I, I, I said I'm not going to do anything about it before school starts if you have time to talk about it but we, we've tried talking to different people at the college, but you get a different person each time. You know? right. I've gotten more satisfaction by going over to the Welcome Center and complaining to them, and they would call somebody to come get the trash. You know? yeah. but, I think we can help find the, the correct people at the college. We yeah. can help find the correct, correct people. Well, also they need Let's to just not put kids in charge of it, because it doesn't work. They, all, they also need to talk to the renters. Because that's, I mean, that's the ultimate responsibility. We don't want to have a, a, a society that's me as all the time, which we do, unfortunately. But those kids that are renting, they have responsibilities, and they're the future for our country. Well, I, th so I, they, they I, mean, I mean, some, I mean, some years they're great kids. Yeah. I mean, I mean some they, years they need, that first year they they had the boys' soccer team. Or something they need to be held year. accountable. Go over there and hang out and talk to them. Yeah. You know? They need to be held accountable. Yeah. For their own okay. sake. For my sake, my sanity. Yeah. I'm getting old and crotchety, and I'm not taking it no more. We don't want to go there. We don't want to go there, Mike. Well, let, let's try Thanks, this, and, and and we'll see how it goes. Thanks for okay. bringing it to our attention. I, I feel satisfied with that. And see, I didn't ask for any money. You want my phone number mm -hmm. before you leave? <laughs> yeah, give me your number. Seven zero zero seven. Just don't give Dave your number. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Mike. All right. Thank you very much. Take care. Okay. You good? Okay. All right. Uh, we, ladies and gentlemen, are down to uh, department uh, and board reports. First up is Jerry Arnold. Good evening, sir. Hello, good evening. Jerry. How are you all? Hi, Jerry. Hi, Dave Thomas. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? Before Jerry begins his report, Jerry, if I'm correct, uh, F3 and F4 would be under your wheelhouse to discuss this evening? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'd like to invoke Chair's prerogative that when Jerry's finished with his report, let's go ahead and take up F3 and F4. Sounds good. Or integrate it into your report if you wish. Okay. 
I'm working uh, mainly on Truck Fest Children's Festival, and it is scheduled for September 17th and 18th. We will have ongoing meetings. We've had uh, interest in some other groups, uh, specifically Strawberry Festival, to participate in that, so that's great. So we'll be conducting meetings and planning for that. Uh, the street department continues to work on North Canal Street sidewalks, and we've completed the residential sidewalk on Fayette and installing another one on uh, Camden Avenue. Um, also, uh, sewer departments continuing to work on Spring Street. The, the crews reset back to the north end of the project, started laying the storm sewer. Uh, again, hopefully, they're not as deep with that storm, so we hope not to encounter as much in uh, bad conditions as we did with the sewer. So I'm hoping that moves along a little a little quicker than the sewer did, because they were in some pretty nasty stuff down there with the sewer. But hopefully that moves along and, and we get those sidewalks in. I did talk to the uh, paving contractor. I've actually talked to him a couple times. He's up on uh, Smithfield actually this evening. I asked him just to go ahead and grind that intersection and fix where we had that water leak right after the street was paved. Uh, so he was grinding this evening and, and going to do the wearing tomorrow to, to fix that area. But uh, I asked him to please put us on his, make sure that we were in the, the wheelhouse in his schedule for late October, uh, early November for paving both North Canal, Willard Way, and, and Spring Street. So uh, like I said, just, just got to knock that out and, and uh, finish that project up this year. Um, water, there's nothing new to report. <coughs> Waste collection, we continue to have issues with truck repairs. As everyone knows, there's a shortage on everything right now. Um, we've had a truck down, one of, our, one of our trucks down now for about two and a half weeks waiting on a wiring harness. And uh, I believe there's a letter in your packet in, in correspondence about a delay in the coming generators that Jay was expecting on that grant project. Well, there's a delay in Cummins parts as well. Uh, it, it has Cummins engine in it. So it just seems like a, everything we go to do, there's a shortage on. There's a shortage on rubber for tires and car bumpers and <laughs> just everything that, uh, oh yeah, I expect tire prices to rise. Um, and uh, we're, we're looking for, or looking to hire a Class B CDL truck driver. We are short staffed in waste collection as well. Under engineering, um, Jay has completed the specifications for the City Hall roof replacement, and he will be advertising, or will be in the paper next week, for a bid opening August the 12th so that we can review the bids and get back on the 19th, the August 19th City Council meeting for approval so we can get that project in again prior to the winter months. And that's all I have under my report, unless there's questions on that. Any questions or comments for Jerry before we get into F3 and F4? No, sir. Okay. F3, F3 in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, Nancy Burgess, as you know, out on the island, has three structures on her property. One singular access off of Island Avenue to those structures. The entrance to all three structures is, starts within the corporate limits, but because of the corporation boundary line, it cuts one of those structures that puts it within the county, just outside of the city limits. We had addressed uh, those structures and then she had asked for us to address the third one and again it was discovered it was in the county so long story short to, to simplify things we asked Terry Joe to just let us go ahead and address it as we did the other two in doing so though the county uh, would like us to sign this MOU that says that structure is also in our first due that that 911 center would call Buchanan Fire and Police first to respond to that structure. And again, go ahead. I have a question. Can we not just annex the third structure? Can I just say what everybody here is thinking? I mean, is that something that we could, have we discussed that? 
No, that's not been a discussion, but I don't know I, I don't know the, the rules of annexation if it's minor boundary adjustment. I think if the property owner signs that they accept that, that, that they are willing to come into the corporate limits, I mean, she already was a resident of the corporate limits. So, yes, and like I said, take it all one two, two structures. Tom O'Neill just said thank you, that's what should happen. So, there you go. I, I, I think that that's what, I think that's our course of action. I think that, that that simplifies that we don't need a memorandum of understanding. She's already a resident of the corporate limits. If we just need one more piece of property, then then we're free and clear, and that she already owns it, so it, it, it shouldn't be a problem. I think that's the that's the angle we should go. Yeah. All right. Sounds good to me. Is, is council yeah. cool with that? Yeah. Could I? You need a I think you need, you need to ask the property owner what their intentions are. Well, right. however, however, I would still, even even with that, I would offer that as a solution to the problem, but I would still not recommend, if, it, if, if push came to shove, I would not recommend that being addressed as a county address. I agree. Uh -huh. Coming from a, 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 an access that's within the corporation. I agree. I agree. I, think I just think this this this, this, this makes up. sense that yes. we should try to get all, all of that in the corporate yes. limit. We're just no, talking about one piece of property. That wasn't no, that was not discussed with her. Again, Nancy called for an address. Yeah. And that's how this started. And and from that, you know, Terry just said, Yeah, we, we don't care if you all address it, but we don't want to be responsible for the nine one one call out if it's a city address. Let's call Nancy um, in the coming days and, and, and talk to her and Daryl about this and see if that would be something that they would be open to. I will give her a call the first week and then we can we can touch back on it if we need to on okay. uh, on the next meeting. I'll be in touch with Tom if, if that's yeah. the way she she wants to go that way Tom can prepare right. the right ordinance for it. So, right. Okay. Well that's that's good on that one. Um, the other one was the bid opening results for the professional professional surveying services uh, to accept the Podesta and associate uh, bid. It was 25 MB. Do you have that number? Because I didn't even write it down. Actually, thanks, Thomas. What was it? 23. <laughs> 23, 23 you had mentioned it last year. Yes, I did. It was in my last report, and I apologize. I didn't jot it down. It was, less, it was less than 24,000. Yes. 23, something like that. Okay. So we need a motion to approve? Yes, sir. Uh, so second. Motion by Thomas, second by Paul Ball. This is the approval of bid opening results for professional surveying services to accept the Testa and Associates Incorporated's bid. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Pam, are you still there? Still there. Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, like, sign, opposed. Motion carries. I will touch base with Mrs. Burgess first. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you. Jerry. Thank you. All right. We are now to Ann Barrel Jenkins, who is going to deliver us a financial report. And like we did with Mr. Arnold. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the budget revision that we talked about last time at the conclusion of Amby's report. Or she can interwork it into her report however she likes to do. Go ahead. Well, my first point of the report is pretty, pretty short, so I'll give you the balances for the enterprise funds ending June 30th, 2021. Waste collection board for money market checking was 852908 CD uh, savings was 58536 Water Board's money market checking was 354452 and the Working Capital Fund, which is savings and CDs, is 386243 Sanitary Board money market, 531336 and the Working Capital, 457076 and Stormwater Fund is 139091 and I mentioned those as Working Capitals because of the rules we have to abide by by putting funds into the working capital for the utility, the water and sewer utility funds. The general fund payment of bills worth noting, uh, $3,000 was expensed to Van Austrian Architects for the July uh, through December of 21 fiscal year budget, his allocation. Um, $2,000 to the Buchanan Utility Boards, that was to clean up 15, uh, Cleveland Avenue, which the city now has possession of. 
2386 to Tyler Technology that was yearly maintenance fee for uh, software subscriptions for utility billing and printer hardware $5,070 Highland landscaping for landscaping at City Hall $7,500 to Dave Davis heating for electrical work at the theater $3,900 rec desk software that's Stalker Youth Center's uh, software for intake of children and managing their programs and $23,533 to Motorola Solutions that's the body cams yearly payment then uh, if you want me to go on with the budget revision I'll go over it kind of quickly it's much the same as you had the last time I didn't change much of it at all um, I can go over it again real quick what I had proposed the uh, for the revenue side of it is as I explained we came into the new year with a higher balance on hand that we anticipated of six hundred thousand dollars so we on the revenue side we had to add in the or uh, actually correct the cultural grant we had applied for fifty thousand the actual grant was uh, submitted for $39,000, so I, I took out $11,000 that was originally budgeted. And then we brought over the ADA theater grant, which was a $10,000 grant with a 50, 50 match with the city. So down in the revenues, you have your professional services. We just talked about those surveys. Uh, that That's budgeted in there. Um, events. Uh, events we uh, put, put in another $20,000. There was some talk of maybe a contribution uh, next year for Strawberry Festival of a little more for $20,000. Then we also put in $25,000, uh, the request that was made to from CDB for the Hotel Motel, so I've already got that in there as well. You just approved it. City Hall building repairs, $25,100. That's uh, the $5,100 for the landscaping that was approved and uh, 20000 for the doors and foundations. We actually got a, a quote back from a contractor, much less than what we thought it was going to be. So um, instead of 40000 we changed it to twenty. I took that 20000 that I had in there for that and moved that down into the uh, flood control project. Uh, let's see. Then we have the fire salaries in there. Um, for the three firemen, it's about $184,000 for everything, benefits and all. Street projects, 66515 and as I mentioned before, part of that was lighting that had to be moved over into this year. They didn't, it didn't get finished last year, so they'll be ordered this year. And uh, street capital, $7,000. It is for the <coughs> lift that's needed at the street department. And then the theater capital uh, theater grant again, uh, taking the eleven thousand dollars out on the uh, grant side of that, but asking you to leave the fifty thousand share in there for the city. Um, then we have the cultural grant of twenty thousand dollars. Again, up at the top we had an ADA grant for ten thousand with a fifty-fifty match, so twenty thousand out for that expense. Stalker East Center, Center Capital Camp capital outlay sorry not campaign 24,500 okay and that's for the Pythias house 14,500 for the asbestos removal and ten thousand dollars for the removal of the debris once the building is raised and then the contributions to the flood control project uh, seventy thousand dollars and contributions to municipal stabilization one hundred thousand dollars and then we had a little Wiggle room, 26490 that I thought maybe we should put in council's uh, contingencies for things that they may want to, small approvals for things that they might want to do or adjust in any other budget. That's all I had. Any questions or comments for Andy relative to the budget revision as presented? So is this the same revision that we voted on at our special meeting? You, you didn't vote we didn't on vote on the we table. You voted on the hiring of the firemen, and that's included in here. I did, there was no revision in the special meeting. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Any further questions or comments? Well, I'll, I'll have a comment, and uh, 
I will um, agree to this revision, but I want to make it very clear. I want to have a, a council meeting in August, hopefully the first meeting in August, to bring up the first due again. I think it's uh, not really financially responsible to continue not having a first due in our community. And uh, I feel strongly about this. Uh, we've talked about it in this, you know, probably too long, but the, uh, I don't think the, uh, the citizens should subsidize the first two, the citizens in our community, the residents in the city. And I think it's just simply a practical matter that we need to discuss as a council, and I would hope my, my fellow council members would agree that we should initiate a first due. It's responsible, and it's a, a long-term issue that we need to deal with. Thank you. I agree with Mr. Thomas, and I think healthy communities have to have these difficult discussions. <coughs> communities that push these things aside or roll over them uh, don't move forward. So if you're uncomfortable, that's good, because you're making progress. And I, su I support the conversation around the first due. We are spending money. Most of the time these are on assets uh, or tangible properties. This is, a, this is a straight liability as far as the balance sheet's concerned. And uh, we can find a way to pay for it. I support it. Uh, but we have to begin to have these conversations, these difficult, stressful conversations that most people avoid having. Uh, but it's, uh, I view it as healthy. Okay. And I'll remind uh, the media and everyone else to ask of us, of the council and the county commission and the county fire board, when we're going to meet. You know, we need to set up a meeting. We need to discuss that. And, um, you know, don't be shy. Ask all three entities. Yeah, when is that meeting? So you set it up, I guess. I mean, we have to get it set up. We have to invite the other two members, and uh, but I would also ask the other two parties too. Yeah, I, I think I think this city council on its own can initiate a first due charge, and well, the sooner we do it, the better. But I agree, Randy. We should meet with all those. We should meet with them. Entities. Yes. I would hope so. Katie had a question. And I yes. think we should do. I think we should have that meeting in July. My question was just when then is the next regular Upshur County Fire Board meeting? If anyone knows I, off the top, I have no idea. Okay. I'll find out. So. Yeah, I have no idea. But we can we can Let have a special meeting. Mm -hmm. I would also recommend that we talk to our legal counsel and verify sure. the fact that we, since the legal entity down there is the uh, Buchanan, Buchanan volunteer. volunteer Fire Department, can the municipality bill for services that a volunteer fire department is is delivering? So. If not, then we better get uh, to work on uh, setting up a, a diff new entity that's a municipal entity that, that we can bill for. So I would think before we talk about this, I would like to get a legal justification or recommendation. Mr. O'Neill has popped on uh, to, the, to, the, to the view of the screen. I'll look at that. I, um I don't want to express uh, an uninformed opinion before I've done my proper research, um, but we'll, uh, I'll certainly look into that. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank you. it's all our goals to protect the citizens and their assets. That's what we want. Yeah. Okay. And having said that, uh, Mr. Mayor, I move uh, that we accept the budget as presented. Okay. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Sanders and second by Mr. Rigger. Hearing discussion, we are now ready to call for the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 That's a roll. Like call. sign of opposed. I'm abstaining. You're abstaining? Yep. Okay. Um, so we do, because this is a revision, we do need to have a roll call. I will defer to Mr. Sanders to roll, roll call the council members. Mrs. Allball. Yes. 
Mrs. Backflew. Yes. Mr. Rigger. Yes. Mr. Rylands. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Epstein. Mr. Sanders votes yes. Mr. Skinner. Yes. Okay. Motion carries as earlier reported. I'll okay. pass this around in just a second. Uh, so you're gonna yeah we'll, we'll 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 sign for that. Okay. Thank you to the fellow council members for uh, our passage of the budget revision. So, okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, we've heard uh, Amy's report. Uh, we are now to the as of today. I feel like I'm announcing a, like a brand new couple, you know, for the, taking over your role first yeah. for the first time. The <laughs> public, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You are, so, yes. no, for the first time uh, at council, we learned today that the city of Buchanan Police Department is now 100% fully accredited. Matt, congratulations. <laughs> It was easy, right? <laughs> 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 I was uh, when I was addressing the, the commission, the uh, the chair uh, when we were discussing that I wore the, I played the dual role of police chief and the accreditation manager. Randy can attest to this. He was there. The real long pause. He's like, I have no other words for that. <laughs> so today is historical. Uh, I'm pleased to report that uh, after meeting uh, with the the Collier Commission for our final hearing today, that we are fully accredited, with no conditions placed on our accreditation. Yes. Which Mr. Sanders can attest to that most of the other agencies we saw go before us today had conditions put on them. And they were agencies uh, upwards of a thousand uh, uh, officers on their staff. Uh, so that's it's monumental uh, to achieve that. Uh, it's definitely been um, uh, a, a labor uh, over the last uh, almost four years uh, to the day uh, we began to explore this concept. And um, uh, as we uh, molded ourselves to it and bought into the concept and learned the process, it truly became a journey. Uh, and this journey, as I've reported many times, it's, it's, it's never about the destination. It's an ongoing journey. Uh, our accreditation will uh, be forever onward uh, as we uh, strive for best practices and continually better ourselves. Uh, I do anticipate having a, a, a little more formal of a report. I'm still fresh off of the uh, uh, the meeting with the commission today. Uh, we will uh, uh, get information first of next week on how to receive our formal award. Uh, and I do anticipate having that in hand at the next council meeting that I come to in August. So. Uh, uh, with that, I, I will have a more formal report, just kind of revisiting everything that we did uh, to 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 reach this monumental uh, day. You're going to read us the entire thing word for word. We'll read the standard number, yeah, and the proofs. <laughs> now that's reserved for the for the policy committee. They they've sat through almost three years of that. Uh, uh, my thanks to Randy for being there today, for helping out, for getting the technology set up. I, I truly appreciate you. Uh, everything that you uh, did. Pleasure, and honor. Uh, the only other thing I have to report beyond that is uh, uh, we continue to accept uh, applications uh, for a police officer, as I've reported on, on the past. Uh, we uh, currently do not have a list, so we're trying to reestablish our list. Uh, our application deadline uh, has been extended to July 23rd, uh, at which point we do anticipate uh, conducting testing on August 14th. Coincidentally, um, uh, as opposed to uh, times in the past where we've tested, we, we actually combined, uh, police civil service uh, opted to combine both tests on the same day to make it a little more convenient uh, for our applicants. So both the physical agility and the, uh, the written test will occur on August 14th. 
Uh, and then finally, uh, Jacob Garrison is nearing completion uh, of the police academy. He's in his seventh of ten weeks uh, at the State Police Academy. We do anticipate his graduation on August 6th, at which point he'll begin a 12-week process of field training. Uh, Mayor, that's all I have to answer questions. Any questions for Chief Gregory? Just uh, or comments? congratulations. Thank you. It's, uh, I know it was a long uh, road. It was a little fuzzy in the beginning there, and uh, but you guys have done a great job, and it was all your efforts, and so congratulations. And I think a long time ago I said something. If you can, if you if buy into all this and accept it, I think you'll be a star in law enforcement yeah. in the state. And I think you've achieved that. Uh, for yourself and for the department, and, and I appreciate it. And so does a lot of uh, the community in general. Appreciate your time. I, I, I think we all echo that, Matt. Thank you for, for what you've done. I don't appreciate know it. if we can. Uh, I, I've been trying to download. This is a 28 minute, 47 second video, so this is the wrong way to do it. Just email it to us. Uh, <laughs> I want to play this part if I can. This, this is a. Uh, Hang this on. is what I didn't realize the camera was still rolling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to recommend uh, to the full commission that Buckhannon uh, Police Department for initial accreditation. Second. It has been moved and properly second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, Chief. Now, so that was a, that was a formal announcement. Uh, the chief had a few more but words, but then this was the end. Uh, led the agency through the accreditation process. I began to appreciate that more and more. Uh, it truly is a valuable aspect of uh, the most valuable aspect of accreditation. And uh, I hope to embrace that uh, and move forward with that mindset, that accredited mindset that I mentioned earlier uh, with my staff as we uh, perform best practices in, in our service to the community. So again, thank you very much. Yeah, it makes you look now watch awesome. this, now watch this, watch this. Next <laughs> that says it all right there. <laughs> I know, you seem pretty relaxed tonight, so well, yeah, yeah, it's all out there. Nothing's right. gonna bother me. He was so prim and proper, and then when he turned the camera and mic off, he just fell back in the chair and went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I got it on tape. I hear South Carol Trump South Carolina. Can we do that one more time? Sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I I got, I got, uh, I got a couple goosebumps watching all that down there today, so it was a privilege. So, well, congratulations, Matt, so, and to your department, and, uh, and also to the uh, citizens and business owners of this town. Yeah. Um, who have a excellent police department. So, and to be in the same company as Charleston, South Carolina, where they were headed to next. I mean, that's you know, Charleston, South Carolina is a heck of a nice place. So, um, and much quite a bit larger than here. So. Yeah, it really is. Okay. Wow. All right. All right. Uh, I asked Attorney Tom O'Neill, uh, ma'am. Mayor. Yeah. I want to congratulate Matt myself. I've known him since he was young, and Matt is the type of person that if you give him a task, that he will never back down, and he can achieve what other people can't never do, and I'm very proud of him. Thanks, Pam. Thank you. Okay. I spoke with City Attorney Tom O'Neill earlier. He does not have a formal report on our department uh, and board report. So we are down to correspondence and, or, uh, correspondence and information. Uh, draft of unapproved social or special planning uh, commission minutes, uh, 615 2021, uh, for possible use of Madison Street property. And we got the findings report uh, from the planning commission meeting on the same date for possible uses of Madison Street property. Um, 
we got the announcement again of the 52nd Annual Conference of the West Virginia Municipal League. That'll be August 3 through 6 up at Ogilvy Resort at Wheeling. Uh, and, and because of that, we have uh, rescheduled the City Council meeting the date uh, for, of August 5th, uh, which is the typical meeting time, to Tuesday, August 3rd, due to our participation in the Municipal League Conference. Uh, we have public notice of change in water rates that will become effective on August 1. Uh, we have a notice of uh, Police Civil Service Commission accepting uh, applications uh, for position of full-time police officer. The deadline is July the 23rd. And the approval of the letter uh, from the West Virginia Division of Culture uh, and History for time, of time extension regarding the Fast Track ADA and Emergency uh, Grant uh, Award for the Colonial Theater Project. Uh, we've got a grant award notification fiscal year 2022 cultural facilities from the Western Department of Arts and Culture and History for the Colonial Theater Project. We have uh, public relations uh, for the city fire, festival Fridays and fireworks uh, winning combination the fireworks I think were excellent this year. Our citizens really really enjoyed those. Um, so I, I'm very pleased with, with how that turned out. Even with a little bit of rain earlier that evening, folks came back downtown and uh, really enjoyed it. And uh, I, I really I enjoyed taking the pictures of them. So um, we also have a letter up to the uh, West Virginia. Uh, well, this is for this is what we talked about earlier. This is the grant the uh, emergency power generators. They are being delayed, uh, as we just discussed. Uh, Jerry talked about in Jay's report, uh, and then we also have a FOIA request from James Hans about a Buchanan Police Department incident report and uh, from, from data specialists about City of Buchanan employee contract information. And finally, we've got the report of the cat and dog activity for Upshur County Commission, May and June 2021. Uh, under the consent agenda, we do not have E1. We only have E2 and E3, which are the approval of the building and wiring permits and the approval of the payment of bills. Uh, I would entertain a motion that we expect, approve the consent agenda as permitted, as presented, including E2 and E3. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Rylands. We have a second by Mrs. Allball. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 It appears the ayes have it. So we'll, we'll accept the consent agenda. We are down to strategic issues for discussion and or vote, and we have we have two uh, items left. I spoke with a few of you earlier today. Relative to the city of Buchanan appointments, several of the people that I asked to fill positions uh, about two weeks ago are still kind of on the fence about it. So I have asked Teresa uh, to set up a uh, potential uh, special meeting at 9 a.m. this coming Wednesday morning. It'll be very, very, very quick. It just will be to go down the list of the remaining appointments um, that will that we were supposed to take up this evening. I ask if we're going to take those up on Wednesday morning. That way, we'll give the folks a little bit more time uh, to decide if they're going to serve on some of these committees or uh, give me a chance to find alternates at, in, in whom I've asked. So. If the council would agree, I'd like to table uh, F or uh, yeah F7 until a special meeting, which will be held here at council chambers on uh, Wednesday uh, at 9 a.m. Could I have a motion, please, to table? Sure. That? Okay. We have a motion by Mr. Sanders, a second by Mr. Rylands. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Okay, F8, West Virginia Infrastructure and Jobs Development Council Grant Agreement. Amby, do you want to? Uh, I can briefly talk to it. It's, okay. uh, uh, it's the same issue. We have a meeting this morning with the Sanitary Board, and uh, Jay Holland explained that uh, it's the same grant, uh, but instead of the emergency services receiving the money from the federal government, the IJDC will receive the money from the federal uh, government government and uh, there's three invoices that we're waiting on to be paid but they we have to sign that we're agreeable to this change in uh, dispersing of the money that's just a formality right? yes yeah. it's a different group handling the money now so do we need the motion about this or yeah yes okay. so moved. Second. okay um we have a motion by mr thomas and a second by mr rylands yep. 
Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 It appears the ayes have it. Um, so we'll, we'll consider that motion passed. Thank you, Amby. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're down to council comments and announcements. And Mary, you're up first. Um, I'm still waiting to confirm that my house is going to be sold. And um, they, they're getting closer to it. So as soon as I know that, I, you, you'll be my first person I call. Okay. Okay? All right. It's going to be soon. Okay. Anything else for Mary? Oh, I might not be at the next meeting, huh? Yeah, you will. Oh, yeah, we'll yeah. be on the third. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We won't say goodbye yet. Yeah, I don't want to do that. There have, so just, there have been some rumors going around town. Mary has not resigned. Mary just talked about that, you know, the sale of her house is coming. She's yep. still with us, so just want to, she's here this evening. So just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Yep. Okay. Um, Pam. I don't have anything, thank you. Okay. See, Jay. I'd like to once again congratulate the police department. I don't know that it's sunk in with a lot of folks the the, uh, the effort and the uh, the intentions that were put forth here and and uh, to differentiate yourself from almost all but one other police department in the state in, in today's climate with the defund the police and all these other issues uh, to accomplish this I think it's perfect timing and uh, it's also uh, a reflection on your leadership and so I want to congratulate you. Thank you CJ. Dave Thomas. The, uh, just a couple comments and uh, you think you know what I'm going to say about Thursday Robbie but uh, <laughs> I do I do think we ought to try to look at the number five Thursdays to, to meet with the county commission occasionally. It, it would be good for us to all do. And I appreciate what CJ said in uh, regard to the uh, revision of the budget and the first due and so forth. Uh, for a community to, to continue to improve and get better and have common sense, you also have to discuss, frankly, areas that are not very, uh, <coughs> we're not going to agree on. And we can agree to uh, disagree agreeably but we need to talk about things that make some of us uncomfortable for the future of the, of the community. And uh, thanks for what you said, CJ, regarding that. I think that's very important. That's all. Everybody have a great weekend. And I'll see you, uh, I guess, August the uh, 3rd, is it? Yeah, August 3rd. And yes, we have sir. a special meeting. Next we'll week. Next week. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Um, Jack. Uh, obviously, I share the same sentiments as CJ and Dave. Uh, Matt, congratulations. Uh, what a milestone. Uh, what an accomplishment in your professional career. Uh, regrettably, that makes you a hot commodity. <laughs> you know, we, 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 he shake his head yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, already you, asked. You, you have every right to brag and be proud. But uh, we know that you couldn't do it alone. And so all those that assisted you and helped you, you know, they deserve credit as well. And, uh, but uh, we, Buchanan may not be the first to receive the CALEA accreditation, uh, but we know we're first overall in our police department. So congratulations. Thank you. Randy. Yes, uh, I joined the others in uh, commending uh, Chief Gregory and I was, as has been mentioned more than once, uh, I was able to be there. Uh, and witness it. I, I was there to help set up the computers and, and the, a little bit of the IT stuff. But what I did notice Matt do, he was very concerned about making sure that the, some of the other officers were in the room and uh, congratulate the other officers when he had the chance and so forth. He, he shared the, the, you know, the victory and shared the uh, good news among the department. I know that I'm sure you've already talked to every officer and thanked them for their contribution. Chief, um, I, I, he's he's done a great job, and to watch to watch four other departments go before us, and they all had about the same amount of time. It was it was tough. It was uh, 15, 20 to 30 minutes each, 
And we sat there, and there were some large departments, huge departments. There was uh, one chief right before, maybe two, two spots before uh, Chief Gregory that uh, came from the New York Police Department. To, uh, to, you know, then he took a chief's position. Where was it? Where was he? In Wilmington, Delaware. Wilmington, Delaware. So, uh, you know, this guy was talking about working for Mayor Giuliani and Commissioner. Uh, right. uh, yeah, Brad, and it was just pretty impressive to hear these folks talk. And then when our chief stepped up to the plate, when it was his turn, man, he held his own. You know, uh, chief, you did a fantastic job. You had every question out of the park. You had no idea what questions they were going to ask you. You came right back with good, solid answers. I was thrilled to be in the room and watch, watch it firsthand. So, again, kudos. You did a great job. You made Buchanan proud. Uh, I just wish everybody could have been. Uh, watching that and been a party to it. Very quickly, I'll report on uh, my activity this past weekend. The Miss West Virginia USA and Miss West Virginia Teen USA was in Buchanan. I can report it was a huge success. We had 26 uh, participants from around the state of West Virginia. Our winner is Alexis Bland from Parkersburg, Miss West Virginia USA. Uh, Brian A. Knotts won the Miss West Virginia Teen USA and she's from Grafton. They'll be here Sunday. We're going to have uh, a meeting to go over paperwork and, and just uh, you know, kind of set the, our agenda for the upcoming year. Uh, the community could have been more helpful. Uh, the media was just fantastic in covering everything. Uh, the accuracy on everything. I mean, I read every article that was published and I got a lot of uh, follow-up questions and so forth. So I appreciate the due diligence that everybody did and the media did. It was spot on. Uh, we sold out all hotels. We saw CJ hosted a reception at the Opera House. It was sold out. Uh, the auditorium on the campus was 20 seats shy Sunday of selling out. So this, it was just a complete success through and through, so I couldn't be more proud of a cannon. Uh, the VIPs were involved. They did a tremendous job, Chief, and I'll certainly let Steve Wyckoff know and send them a thank you note. They were there for parking control and crowd, and, and, and crowd control and so forth. Um, just everybody, the community. I, I couldn't be more proud of a cannon. Uh, but I know there's going to be other days they'll be just as proud, if not prouder. So that's my report, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Randy. And, thank the you. and I want to thank the Mayor, too. I'm sorry. The Mayor <coughs> gave a, a couple of different welcomes to the city to uh, some different events. So uh, thank you for being there sure. and for supporting sure. as well. Absolutely. Thanks for bringing that to Buchanan and helping our local economy. So, uh, well, the council uh, stole all my thunder. So, Matt, congratulations again. Um, I, uh, I think we should, uh, you know, shout this from the mountaintops, as I know that we will with, with our media outlets here locally. Uh, but this is a big deal, uh, not only for here, but for the state of West Virginia to have, you know, yet, a, yet another, another notch in the belt of having a great police department uh, within the state. So uh, with that, um, I would entertain a motion before this train comes through that we adjourn. Hello, sir.